when we talk about uh, religion, um, we're essentially talking about some notion of divinity. And I'll use the term the divine or divinity instead of God just to be more inclusive. Um, because the existence of uh, uh, the existence of something supernatural isn't the best word. Uh, something beyond the kin of sciences, we'll say instead, beyond like the purely physical, it is what's at the core of. 90% of religions, right? Uh, some idea of spirituality is involved in all of them. And at the core, of, at the center of that uh, understanding of a spirituality is each individual religion's understanding of divinity. What is the mystical or incomprehensible, uh, incomprehensible, or at least not fully comprehensible to humankind? And there are three sort of core types of arguments for the existence of the divine. Uh, and they take different forms depending on what religion you're talking about, because the nature of the, the divine changes between religions. Um, when you have, like within the uh, Judeo-Christian, uh, the Abrahamic religions, right? one central God who is the creator, the argument for the existence of that God is going to be different than, say, um, the notion of Brahman or the unified oneness of reality that's at the center of Hinduism and the Vedic schools of thought. So since you have these differences, the general types of arguments are the same, but their actual structures and uh, uh, are going to be different given that what you're arguing for is different between them. Uh, so these three general types of arguments are the ontological argument, which is a purely logical uh, argument, right? So it argues for the logical necessity of the divine's existence. Right? Again, this goes back to the that a uh, subfield uh, or subbranch of metaphysics known as ontology, right? The study of being. And on uh, and so an ontological argument is going to argue for the impossibility of the impossibility. <laughs> um for the impossibility of you know the divine's non-existence it seeks to argue its necessity it's ontological arguments are usually negative in formation right uh, so they're usually done as proofs by contradiction reductio ad absurdums in one form or another uh, as a means of showing how assuming the non-existence of say god leads us to abs uh, some absurd conclusion or leads to absurdity. Uh, the second type of argument is what's known as the cosmological argument. This is perhaps the most uh, abundant for, uh, type of argument in philosophy uh, of religion and especially within the Judeo-Christian traditions. Um, you also see it in uh, to a lesser extent in Buddhism for the notion of shunyata or nothingness at the center, being at the center of all existence. Uh, and also in Hinduism for, uh, you know, the existence of um, things like avatism, right? The, the various gods and the idea that and the cycle of reincarnation and whatnot. So the cosmological argument at its core is uh, an argument for the divine's existence uh, based on the intolerability 
or the infinite regress of cause and effect that would result without there being uh, that something, or in the case of Buddhism, nothing at the center of everything, right? There must be some ultimate cause or uh, somewhere where the buck stops in the story of creation, right? Uh, or the cause to all things. So the cosmological arguments, very, very uh, popular, I guess, is one way of putting it in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Uh, it's the most common type of argument that you see for God's existence. Um, and then the third one, you don't see this one too much in uh, you don't see it too much in Buddhism or Hinduism. You might see it a little bit in older forms of Confucianism and in more naturalistic religions, you will often see this. Um, and you do see it to some degree within the Judeo-Christian tradition, not nearly as much as either the ontological or the cosmological argument. But the last one is the teleological argument, right? which just argues for the divine's existence based on uh, the seemingly purposeful or functional nature of everything in the world, right? Uh, it's essentially the argument against chance is another way of talking about the teleological argument. Uh, looking at the world around us and going, well, everything has a purpose and reason. That isn't something that could happen by chance. You know, it's the argument for intelligent design in, or at least willful design. Uh, and I'll sit and I'm, I'll side with willful as a better interpretation rather than intelligent because it's the argument that you see at the center of Taoism. Uh, you see it in Shintoism as well. The idea that there is uh, a will to the world um, and a self-organizing will at the center of everything. And so everything has purpose and a mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, has a particular end to it, a teleology, a telos, right? Uh, but it's not like there's a person, right? Uh, a, a personal God at the center of these religions, uh, at the center of those religions. It's more like there's an incomprehensible force that organizes everything, similar to like a fifth law of physics, if you will, just one that can't be measured by science. That's rather what the Tao is like. So we have these three forms of argument. Um, of them, well, depending on, you know, your own beliefs, uh, different uh, the different forms of argument might be more or less compelling to you. The uh, closest that I ever got, uh, I'm not particularly uh, a relig religious myself, uh, but the closest I ever got to being convinced uh, towards religion were the various ontological arguments for different uh, in different religions, because I'm someone who appreciates logic above. Um, you know, cosmological or teleological explanations. Okay. So let's progress to um, one particular ontological form of the ontological argument in the Judeo-Christian tradition.